Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video. Today is going to be my follow-up video to the recent content that I've made regarding Gacha Smack's opinions for Bronya, Sparkle, and Ranmei, uh, and in his own very own words. I got people over here trying to tell me that I'm sleeping on Sparkle and Bronya plus Blade. This comp is nowhere near the scopes of broken or insane. In fact, to the contrary, it is incredibly mid. This is pretty much my part two because part one, uh, I've pretty much shown why Gacha Smack, um, the performance was pretty underwhelming in his account because number one, he didn't really optimize the speed to the maximum potential. Number two, his Bronya traces were not maxed. And number three, the actual result from the testing he found from Bronya and Sparkle Rame was actually higher than the testing he found with Black Swan and with Pella because they te he technically did more damage. Even though they cleared in the same cycle, he technically did more damage. Subscribe! Okay, so today, what we're essentially gonna be doing is the previous video was me pointing out the flaws with Gacha Smack's runs when he was using Sparkle, Bronya, Runme. And today, I will essentially be doing the exact same team comp with three different DPS to show why this team comp is, in my opinion, one of, if not the strongest hyper carry setup pretty much anyone can run in Hongkai Stario as of the current moment, right? So I have with me here three separate runs that I've recorded, each with, this is Jing Liu, this is with Welt, and this is with Blade, right? And each of these runs, I was running the exact same team comp, Run May, Sparkle, Bronya, Run May, Sparkle, Bronya, Run May, Sparkle, Bronya, just to really show you guys how universal this team comp is and it legit just makes everything work as long as you tick the criteria to actually make it work. So first of all, let's just show the very, very easy run. This was the run with Jing Liu. She is pretty much the easiest because Jing Liu by herself is just an incredibly insane DPS unit. So I'll just start with something that's not very impressive. So we'll start with Jing Liu first. Um, basically, the concept for this clear as well as for every other clear uh, no matter what MOC stage is number one you have to understand speed tuning and for that please kindly check out my previous speed tuning video by now I probably have posted like three separate videos about speed tuning right for sparkle speed tuning for the hyper speed ultra speed speed tuning how you can make your team go three times in one turn all that kind of stuff the very basic fundamental requirement for this team is that you have to make sure that both your Bronya and sparkle go three times in a single wave and like I mentioned in my previous speed tuning video it is not something that's very very difficult to obtain as long as you forsake everything else, right? My Bronya and my Sparkle, they have less than 100 crit damage because I just went all in on speed. So um, we're just going to see how, 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 how this goes on, right? So yep, this is very, very standard. We are running a slow Rame with Von Wet. That's why my, my Rame was able to go very first so that she does gain the buff uh, for the rest of our DPS units, right? So now Sparkle is just going to do the Sparkle things, right? So Sparkle is going to give our AV advance. Jing Liu uh, essentially just uh, slow Jing Liu build, all in crit rate, all in crit damage, I don't know what I was cooking here. There's nothing with the contest, so I'm just going to do this. And Jing Liu's damage herself, honestly, is just ridiculously high to the point where I was intentionally thinking I need to slow down my damage. I, I don't want my Jing Liu to kill them too fast because if my Jing Liu kills them too fast, then I wouldn't be able to generate enough energy for the rest of my team. Right? So I was intentionally not using Rame's ultimate here to reduce my damage so that we can go on to the next wave. If your Jing Liu is uh, respectfully shit, then you wouldn't face it. I was literally suffering from success. That's why I need to reduce my Jing Liu's damage, right? So... Yep, so now we're just gonna do the exact same thing. My Bronya is gonna just do all the kind of stuff. And then we just now pop our ultimate on the kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Keep in mind, this is completely without Rame's ultimate buff. Right? I, I was saving Rame's ultimate buff, right? For, for, for later on, right? So I don't wanna waste it. So now we're just gonna do all this. Yep. Uh, remember, remember, I don't wanna use my Sparkle's ultimate here because Sparkle is the one with Dance Dance Dance. And if I was to use Sparkle's ultimate, then Bronya wouldn't get the extra turn, right? We wanna wait for Bronya to go. After Bronya go, then we can use Sparkle's ultimate. All right, so now you can see that we are already pretty much almost killed them without using Rame's ultimate at all. Like, they are already pretty much almost dead. Uh, at this specific point, it was a little bit of RNG if the Automatron lives. So I think I was trying to like one-shot this dude so that we don't face any RNG issues. But if he does live, then you have to grind a little bit of RNG here. Unfortunately, he lives. So we have to pretty much pull, pull this over, right? We use the ultimate, action value advance. Rame, we're, we're, now we can start using our ultimate because it doesn't matter if you use the ultimate or don't use the ultimate anymore, right? Because it's gonna go on to the next wave, right? Now our buff from Rame is gonna last the full two turns. All right, one skill, he's gonna do this. Um, uh, at this point, it doesn't really matter because they're they pretty much almost dead, all right? So there's a little bit of RNG here and there. Um, Sparkle is gonna buff her up. 
くだらないトン月光を剣とす We start off with Brian's ultimate here because it is going to be where Sparkle will gain the benefit from Brian's ultimate. And as well as Jing, right? Because the higher our Sparkle's crit damage, the more scaling and this is very basic stuff. So uh, we just basically cast our ultimate. Yeah, Sparkle is going to give us the action value advance. And now this is going to be huge, huge damage because this is with all the buffs. Okay, I take it back. It's not even that huge of a damage. I mean, it is two target, but, but it's, it's pretty alright. It's pretty alright. And then we after we, we brought Basava again. Then at this point, they are pretty much almost dead. 32% health remaining. If we only had another two more actions, we wouldn't be able to zero cycle this. It is not quite enough to zero cycle this because it's still 32% HP and the other dude is pretty much like more or less full. So we do need a little bit more. We do need a little bit more. My my right here is just just she her, her purpose has been filled because we really have full coverage from the ultimate, which is why I say slow Rame is the best Rame, especially for zero cycles because her buff pretty much lasts the entire time, right? So now we we just let it cook. Holy shit, that was a uh, unbuffed E by the way. Yeah, the chance of this happening is very very low because my crit chance here is at forty nine percent or forty five percent. So the fact that we actually managed to one shot this dude or almost one shot this dude, okay, we actually one shot this dude. It is kind of insane. Yep, then we do it. Now, after this part, we cast our thingy, and then you can see that my entire team goes up again. So at this point, we are pretty much guaranteed the kill. We are pretty much guaranteed. Remember the Japot is Ice Rest, so it's not quite enough damage, right? So if we only had two turns, which was the unoptimized version, it wouldn't be enough. You need to make sure that your team is fast enough to go six turns. Then it's 100% enough. That's, that's where this team is truly, in my opinion, peak. It's the peak hyper carry setup, right? So, uh, he's gonna do whatever he's do, but at this point, he's 100% dead. Alright. Uh, a little bit of a misplay here. I should have cast my ultimate. I should have wait for Sparkle to buff her up so that we can deal a little, little bit more damage. But at this point, it, it, it's completely irrelevant. Uh, it's just a little bit of misplay, but just so that you guys should know. Yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely overkill. Yeah, but keep in mind, we have a lot of leeway, right? This is two whole ass Jing Liu turns that could have potentially happened. But because we are just doing so much damage that we didn't really need it. But for players that doesn't have a very strong Qing Liu, or don't have like a <laughs> E2 Rame, or don't have a S5 Bronya, yeah? uh, there is definitely still a lot of leeway for you guys to do this zero cycle, right, with Qing Liu. So uh, keep in mind this is also completely off element, right? This dude is Ice Rest and Qing Liu by itself, once again, showing you guys how useless Silver Wolf and Winners Implant is in general. Because if you can brute force content, Winners Implant is just genuinely nothing. But of course, Okay, uh, Silver Wolf is catching strays, but at the end of the day, I just want to say, um, Witness Implant is good for the new players, for players that are just starting out, for players that don't have very, very good relics. But towards the end, when you reach the end game here, Witness Implant is just really not that important. I would just much rather you guys just go for all in hyper carry and just, just kill everything, right? So that is going to be the Qing Liu run. And as you can see from the gear towards the end, I'll basically show my build over here. Um, the slow run may, all right, almost 6k HP. Um, yep, 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 yep. All right, my Qing Liu herself is easy as well. Okay, I, I just, I do want to point out that, of course, not being biased or not being unbiased, this is a, I would say this is probably a top 1% now Qing Liu. Uh, and I know that you guys probably won't even get close to this, but I just want to say that there is definitely leeway. There is definitely a lot of leeway because I killed it way too fucking fast, right? This is easy as one with full, four piece quantum and two piece full arena. Uh, bro, uh, yeah, my Bronya, you can see over here, the stats, it really is just super, super focused on the speed. My crit damage is completely non-existent. In fact, I wasn't even using energy regeneration rope. This rope over here is an attack percentage rope on Bronya. This is an attack percentage rope. Uh, it is really just for the speed. So, um, thought that you guys would know. Uh, and then the rest of it is just, uh, my sparkle is just all in. Like, no crit damage, whatever. Just, just give it the speed and completely off piece and on counter, right? So, this is going to be the Qing Liu run. And now we're going to move on to the second run, which is the uh, Weld run. Now, the Weld run is honestly, um, I was way more impressed with the Weld run than the Qing Liu run because Weld has been shed on for so fucking long. No one has been talking about Weld ever since Dr. Richard came out and because his bounce is all over the place on counter. But now, with the God tier Giga Chat Hyper Carry, like, six turns, even well can zero cycle while being technically not on element, especially against the quantum weak enemy, right? Especially against Olimatron, uh, 40% imaginary as by the way. Uh, but uh, Japot is weak to imaginary, so it is not too bad, but we just take a look at the run itself, right? Well himself as a DPS is, you know, is not that strong compared to Qing Liu, but um, at the end of the day, we are still gonna be able to do it. Although we will have to grind out a little bit of RNG, 
But I'm just saying, the potential is there. The potential for this comp to work is definitely there, right? It is definitely not mid. It's the point that I'm trying to get. I'm not saying that you get this 100% of the time, but you can definitely do this when you when you when you grind it, right? When you, when you grind it out. So, yep. Um, we pop this open, blah 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 blah, right? We do this. Pop open this over here. Use Sparkle's ultimate to action very advanced. Um, I don't think I use Bronze Ultimate because I'm trying to save the Ultimate for the next wave. Alright, then we... Yep. Yeah. Then, we're just gonna basically use our skill. Okay, for this specific point, I actually used Weld's basic attack. I didn't want to use his skill because we were kind of running low on skill points. So, Sparkle buffing Weld and Bronya buffing Weld, she's, he's gonna basically use his basic attack to kind of increase our skill point positivity here. So you see my basic attack is just going to one-shot this dude. Boom! And then Bronner is going to buff him up. And then well, is going to one-shot this dude, right? Was that a pussy? Was that a pussy? Nope! I'm not a pussy, right? Then we go into here, and we just do the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure I cast my Bronner ultimate. Yep, there it is. Because Bronner's ultimate does increase Sparkle's crit damage. Uh, and the rest of the star is... I do want to point out it's very very important in case you guys haven't figured it out by now it's very very important note at this point i press my welt ultimate before his turn begins because at this specific juncture sparkle's crit damage buff from her dream diver is still active because it is not welt's turn yet it is extremely extremely important guys do this because if you don't do this if you cast this ultimate when his turn begins you will lose sparkle's buff so please please remember you can in fact time bronya and sparkle together such that both their buffs overlap which is what makes this comp really good and i'm pretty sure players probably didn't even notice, right? And this can be applied to pretty much any DPS when it comes to the ultimate, especially for units like Argenti, for units like Scylla, for units like, like Jing Yuan. Timing this is going to be very, very important, right? So, um, I, my world ultimate here is basically with the buff of Bronya, Rame, and Sparkle, right? The fucking, the trinity of friendship combined into one. And well, is going to go ahead and do tons of damage. It's not as high as Jing Liu, but it is still pretty fucking high, if I can say so myself, right? So that is pretty much it. Um, at this point, my buff from Rame actually ran out because um, we did have two turns previously, right? So at this point, our buff from Rame actually ran out. But I have no choice, I have to use a basic attack here because otherwise we'll run out of skill points. So this point, I, I do believe you need to grind it out a little bit to kind of grind the RNG from the ultimate to come back up. I'm not sure if she, we actually did grind it. Okay, I guess we didn't grind it out. So at this point, our Rame's ultimate is actually no longer up. Unfortunately. But, you guys can see, even without Rame's ultimate, our damage is still very, very sufficient to get our zero cycle. Yep. Same thing, cast Sparkle's ultimate only after Bronya's turn go. So after the Sparkle's Dance Sun's trigger, you're gonna get everyone up. So everyone's gonna go up here. Okay? So now I'm just looking. This is all the buffs I'm gonna get, right? Uh, insane amount of buffs. Right? Okay, then we're just gonna go ahead. Uh, I do believe. I'm not sure if I cast my ultimate here. I don't think I did because I was thinking. Yeah, I don't think I did. The reason why I didn't cast my ultimate was because in my mind I was thinking, can we get Rame's ultimate back up in time if this dude hits Rame? Unfortunately, this dude didn't hit Rame, so I'm like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. We can't even get Rame's ultimate. Because if this dude hit Rame and if Japan hit Rame, we can definitely get Rame's ultimate here. And well, it's ultimate here will do a lot more damage. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So it is what it is. Right at this point, it is just I was just so far off from getting ultimate. I was just you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna basic attack. Yep. Now I definitely have enough to kill this. I did use my ultimate here because using my skill will generate enough energy to trigger my ultimate again. Pretty much. All right. Pretty much. Pretty much. Right. Pretty much. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty much sure, yeah. Honestly, the ultimate wasn't even needed because he's really dead. Yeah, the ultimate wasn't even needed because he's really dead, right? So at this point, we didn't even, we could use our skill, we didn't use Brian's ultimate, we could, like, he's... Yeah, so like, we have a lot, a lot of room, guys. There's a lot, a lot of room for us to get the zero cycle, right? We didn't use Brian's ultimate, we didn't use Brian's ultimate, we didn't use anything, and we still managed to get the zero cycle. So, pretty much goes to show this comp definitely works, right? The main point is, Bronya Rame Sparkle is incredibly, incredibly strong for pretty much any hyper carries, right? So, yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah. 
I do want to point out this well. Is it relatable? I feel like it's more relatable than my Jingliu, right? Chat. Can we, can we agree this is uh, slightly more relatable than my Jingliu? It's slightly more relatable, right? Slightly. Just slightly. Yeah. Um, the a little bit unrelatable part is gonna be... <laughs> Honestly, it's completely irrelevant because like I said, we do have a lot of room, chat. We have a lot of room. We had a whole ass world ultimate that we didn't even use. So honestly, it's completely fine, right? The elders, it didn't. Okay, the E2 probably matters. The, okay, the world's E2 definitely matters. But I would say we do have a lot of room, right? So, all right, that's gonna be the world run. This is perhaps probably, we saved the best for last. We saved the best for last, right? We saved the best for last. This is the blade run. That Gacha Smack was so adamant that this run just wouldn't work because Blade performs much better with like Pella or like any other units. So we did this run in the exact same stage, Savrock, with the exact same team combo. But the thing is, I tuned my speed better and it's a little bit more optimized. Although in front, I definitely failed quite a bit. And in fact, I will show you the runs where I failed, right? I'm actually going to include the fails over here. Editor, you can, you can include this. I, I, I intentionally show you guys how many times I reset to actually get this run. So you guys can get the gist of like some shortcomings of, of this build, right? Uh, but the thing is, the build is I think the same. It's just that with as with any zero cycles, there's always going to be a certain element of RNG involved, right? So this is actually completely fine. Or is it completely fine? It's not fine. Because Blade getting imprisoned means that Sparkle action very advancing on Blade, he's not going to be fast enough to get the first turn, right? So this is one of the ways that you can fail if, if, if Blade gets imprisoned. Then it's kind of uh, it's a warm, warm situation because he needs to go immediately. Otherwise, it just completely defeats the purpose, right? So yeah, at this point, I'm like, fuck my life. Yeah, then we just reset again. So that's one way that you, this comp can fail, right? This is one of the weaknesses. Yeah, Rame getting here is completely fine, by the way. It's completely fine. As long as she doesn't get imprisoned. So that's fine. We pop this. Rest of the run, you can see that it plays out exactly the same as the Qing Liu run, as well as the Well run, right? The rotations, they are exactly, exactly the same. Yep, then Bronya goes again. Blade goes again. Yep. And then afterwards, I cast the ultimate, just do a little bit more damage. Um. Okay, I do want to point out, this is a little bit annoying. Th this T-Rex. It's a little bit annoying because sometimes this dude, he has the, um, if he hits you, you get pushed back, which can be a little bit annoying. But uh, lucky for us this time, it didn't trigger. So we're completely fine. Yeah. You can see how this gets pushed back. If the T-Rex pushes back our Sparkle and Bronya, it, we're fucked. We're fucked. Because if this pushed back by even a single action value, then the ultimate wouldn't be able to buff us up. But fortunately for us, he didn't push us back. He only pushed back um, Rame and Blade, which is completely fine. Yep. Yep. So we're still we're still well within our range. Um just, just hit the dino. Yeah, hit the dinosaur. Yep. Then Bronya is gonna go forward. Pop it up. And then we cast the ultimate. Always cast Bronya's ultimate first. Because Bronya's ultimate benefits Sparkle as well, right? So something to keep in mind. If you have both ultimate at the same time, Bronya's ultimate first, then Sparkle's ultimate. Um I actually I intentionally didn't use Sparkle's ultimate at this point because I was thinking to myself, okay, should I just gamble and hope to just one-shot them? Because if I manage to one-shot them here, I can actually save the ultimate for the next wave. But unfortunately, my damage was a little bit off. So I'm like, okay, fuck, it's too late. Yeah. So at this point, I was just testing my luck. I was trying to limit test a little bit. Uh, but unfortunately, it didn't work out. So at this point, I was just doing the normal things. All right, then we do the normal action value advance and then do this. And then this follow-up attack pops this. And then we go into the next wave. Um, this run, I'm pretty sure I also failed. I don't remember why I failed, but I'm, I'm sure I also failed this here. I don't remember. We'll just see how it goes then. Let's see if I make any misplays here and there. Uh, so far, so good. This, this comp is just really just very, very brain dead. Okay, there's also another point that you might... Okay, look at this. This is why this stage in particular can also be very annoying because both Savrock and the Dinosaur, they can push down your, your units. And if Blitz gets pushed down too much, Sparkle's skill wouldn't be able to buff Blade back up. So ideally, you want this thing to hit your Rame, essentially. 
or let this thing like if if I rest this, right? So now he's got pushed all the way back. I don't know if this is enough. My blade actually died here. <laughs> but yeah, essentially you don't want that to happen. You want to pretty much make sure that they are aiming units that are not getting affected by the extra value pushback, right? So there's also another fail over there. So that's another fail. Uh, in front part, I feel like with this point we can just skip through because it's exactly the same. Yeah, this is exactly the same. I feel like this is a run, right? Okay, I think this is a run. Yeah, I feel like this is a run. Power is open. Okay, did I save? Okay, I didn't save. I was like, fuck it. I'm not gonna have enough damage, I didn't save. Then I pop this. Rame cast a skill to get the energy back out ASAP. Sparkle do this. Uh, and then we pop this. And then we kill here. Mm -hmm. If your blade doesn't deal as much damage, you still have a Bronya as the leeway to buff Blade up again. So he has one ex entire turn to make sure that he does enough damage. My blade is easier as one, by the way. So yeah, you do have quite a bit of leeway here as well. But it's just, we deal, we're dealing quite a bit of damage there. Our Bronya wasn't really needed there. So we just moved on to the next phase. Okay. Uh, we cast out our ultimate here to get our health back. And then we have a full up here. Okay, cool. Always aim Savrock because his health pool is just more annoying. Yeah. Okay. That would be the ideal scenario. Because you actually want Rame to get pushed back so that this ultimate buff is actually up. So that would be the ideal scenario. Although you're kind of gambling one in four. So it can be a little bit annoying. Blade can also get hit, but he can't get hit too much, essentially. This was definitely annoying because our sparkle did get pushed back. So we actually lost one sparkle turn. But I feel that because my blade's damage was high enough, I don't think it actually mattered to the point where we need to reset run. But this is a little bit annoying. For most players, if your blade's damage is not high enough, then this point you have to reset because you missed out on one of sparkle turn. So now your blade only goes five times. Um, and because the dinosaur actually hit my sparkle and she got enough energy, and you can see that my action value was still very, very far, uh, I decided that the best course of action was to use my ultimate here. Just to buff, cast the buff up right now. Yep. Uh, so you can see that now my Bronya is before my sparkle because of the action value um, pushback. I cast my ultimate here because Blade does benefit from the crit damage, and then later on when sparkle buff him up, he's gonna be the same. 170k, actually insane. Right. So. At this point, I pretty much have to kill them with um, Blade's hit into ultimate to follow up because Bronya is our last line of defense because our Sparkle didn't have enough action value due to the to, due to the pushback. I cast my skill here to get my ultimate back up so that I can still have my, my rest penetration because at this point, I ran out of rest penetration, which was very, very lucky. So Blade went ahead to do this into one hit into a follow up. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't cast my ultimate here. I was waiting for Bronya's ultimate to buff my Blade back up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Then Broya's ultimate buff into my blades, this thingy. And this will pretty much be the run. And then this one shots. Yeah. <laughs> I was going on for the dramatic effect, slow down. I was like, nah, it's good. It's good. So. That's pretty much the end. Then I'll show the build again. Uh, all, no, my support build is exactly the same. But my blade build... Um, this is my blade build. Uh, is it relatable? I don't know. Okay, fine, fine. It's not very relatable as well. But the, the point is... The point is... It is definitely doable. Alright, it is definitely doable. Even if your build is not that great. Um, the fundamental principle of this comp is to show that if you were to play Bronya and Sparkle at six turns per one cycle, it wouldn't be enough. Like even if I if I had a build like this, if I followed Gacha Smack's um, speed tuning uh, and build in general, I wouldn't be able to deal enough damage to get the zero cycle, even if my DPS were built very, very well. So the main point is speed tuning is absolutely pivotal when you want to build the Bronya Sparkle Rame comp. I do understand that it, it might not be uh, accessible to everyone, but if it is accessible, then in my opinion, it is one of, if not the strongest 
um, hyper carry comps in Hongkai Star Rail. That is pretty much the point I want to get across. I'm pretty sure the comment section is going to fucking destroy me for being a unreadable streamer, for, for making content that nobody cares about. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to make it anyways, right? So... With that, we have come to the end of today's content. If you guys want to engage in any further discussions, head on to my Discord at discord.gg forward slash Pokies Village. We have a very active for meeting talking about Hong Kong on a daily basis. Once you come on my stream, that's going to be twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Pokey as well as on YouTube. I'll we'll be shooting to both platforms at the same time. Share you, we update on Discord, right? So, uh, that's pretty much all I have for this build. I really think that Bronya Sparkle Ramay is a very, very good comp. Uh, it might be a little bit unrelatable to some, but if you guys actually can do it, do enjoy it, right? So, all the best for your sparkle pools. All the best for your relic rolls. All right. Blessings of Pokey. And I'll be seeing you guys next time. Take care.